Since World War II, countries have seen the potential of nuclear weapons, and the edge it brings over their enemies is tremendous. Many countries were testing nuclear weapons to enhance their capabilities and to show their rivals what would be the result of any potential clash. But we know how dangerous and the potential threat to whole mankind these nuclear bombs are. And during the testing, some explosions had shown us what happens if we really use them. Today, we'll check out nuclear tests that went horribly wrong. But before starting the video, please subscribe to the channel and click on the notification icon so you will get notified when we upload the next video. 2. The Bainbury Test Atmospheric testing was banned by the US military and scientists had to do underground tests if they wanted to test the capabilities of nuclear weapons. One such test, known as the Bainbury test, was scheduled to occur at 7.30am on December 18, 1970. The test was located at a Nevada test site. The bomb was kept more than 900 feet into a hole little over 7 feet in diameter. It only took about 3 minutes after the test began for people to realise that something had gone horribly wrong. Nearly 300 feet away from the place where the bomb was planted, a fissure opened up in the ground and a cloud of radioactive vapour and dust began pouring into the sky. It was able to rise 8,000 feet into the atmosphere and fallout went on to spread out across Nevada, California and other nearby states. About 400 cars were contaminated. They all had to be vacuumed and sprayed down before they could go back to their owners. Government workers immediately had to evacuate from the test site. But when you're dealing with a nuclear bomb, you don't exactly have a lot of time. Hundreds of them ended up being exposed to the radiation. Many of the workers had suffered from the highest levels of exposure, they later contracted leukemia and passed away. There is a short list of proper names which instantly conjure up the idea of a nuclear catastrophe. Chernobyl, Three Mile Island and Fukushima, for example. Another which perhaps belongs on that list stems from an event which took place right here in southern Nevada. But details of what happened in 1970, just 65 miles north of Las Vegas, took years, even decades, to emerge. It is not very well known even today. The history of the Bainbury disaster starts back in 1951, when mushroom clouds had first started appearing on the horizon northwest of the Las Vegas Valley. To increase our knowledge about nuclear weapons, explained the 1954 Department of Defense newsreel, for here at the Nevada test site, we are engaged in the grim business of survival. 10 minutes to each hour explained how atomic tests were conducted for the 11 years before a treaty with the Soviet Union changed things. Fallout from the Bainbury test, on the 18th of December 1970, the United States conducted the Bainbury underground test at the Nevada test site. Although the 10 kiloton device was detonated at 270 meters below the surface, a large cloud of radioactive dust was released into the atmosphere. For the first time since the Partial Test Ban Treaty PDBT, had driven nuclear testing underground in 1963, a nuclear testing cloud could be observed as far away as Las Vegas, 120 kilometers from the test site. According to a report, PDF, by the National Cancer Institute, Bainbury released 80,000 curies of radioactive iodine-131 into the atmosphere, more than any other US underground nuclear test and comparable to a small atmospheric nuclear test. The radioactive dust reached a height of around 3 kilometers from where it was carried by winds into several adjacent US states. While government workers were evacuated from the test site, hundreds of them were exposed to radiation. In an official report, the Atomic Energy Commission noted that more than 400 cars were contaminated. Most were sprayed down and vacuumed out before returning to their owners. About 100 more needed extra cleaning. As for the workers, the exposures they received, according to the report, were within established safety limits. But after two of the men with the highest levels exposure contracted leukemia and died, their widow spent years fighting for compensation. The courts eventually found the government negligent, but not liable, in the incident. There would be no damages awarded. So, why did this test, which released the most radioactive material of any underground test, go wrong? Well, the US government paused underground testing for six months to investigate, eventually concluding that the geology of the site and its high water content had magnified the bomb's impact. The geology of future test sites would need to be investigated more thoroughly. New rules were put in place for workers as well, limiting their potential exposure. The highest exposures were received by two security guards and were about 30% of the Federal Radiation Council's quarterly guide for the whole body, and about 37% of the guide for thyroid exposure. The fallout also rained down locally, affecting 86 workers at the test site. Although the US Department of Energy stated that none of them had been harmed, two of the workers died four years later from leukemia. Their widow subsequently filed lawsuits against the US government. In a 1996 ruling, a US Court of Appeals found the government to have acted negligently, but concluded that the Bainbury test did not cause the cancer.
After the Bainbury incident, nuclear testing at the Nevada test site was suspended for six months pending investigation. The official report, PDF, issued by the US Atomic Energy Agency Commission, concluded that the primary cause of the venting was an unexpected and unrecognized abnormally high water content in the medium surrounding the detonation point. Treaty status of the 44 nuclear-capable states listed in the CTBT, whose ratification is preconditioned for entry into force. The United States continued conducting underground nuclear tests for over 20 years until the divider test on 23rd of September 1992. In 1996, it was the first country to sign the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, CTBT, which bans all nuclear explosions. The United States is one of the few countries that has yet to ratify the treaty for it to become global law. The last one to have done so is Indonesia, who ratified the CTBT on the 6th of February 2012. 1. Castle Bravo, the largest US nuclear explosion. In the South Pacific, there was once a small patch of land that may have seemed at times to be as close to paradise on Earth as one could get. It was likely similar to what people think of when they suggest they'd retire to a remote island in the middle of the ocean. At least Bikini Atoll was a paradise until it was chosen to be the location of some 23 nuclear tests conducted by the United States between 1946 and 1958. Among the test sites is the infamous Castle Bravo, the first in a series of high-yield thermonuclear weapon design tests conducted as part of the larger Operation Castle. A mistake. The weapon used on March 1, 1954 remains the most powerful nuclear device detonated by the United States and had a yield equivalent of 15 megatons of TNT. That was actually unexpected in itself, and the explosion was two and a half times more powerful than the predicted six megatons, a result of it being the first lithium deuteroid fueled weapon. While significantly smaller in size and scale than the later Soviet's 1961 Saar bomber test, which yielded a 50 megaton blast, Castle Bravo was still 1,000 times as powerful as the Little Boy Bomb that had been detonated over the Japanese city of Hiroshima less than a decade earlier. In what might have seemed almost ironic, the bomb used in the Castle Bravo test was dubbed the Shrimp. In miscalculating the yield, the Shrimp had a devastating impact on the atoll and surrounding area. The Fallout the mushroom cloud from its detonation was massive and reached a height of 130,000 feet, whilst the explosion left a crater on the ocean floor with a diameter of 6,500 feet and a depth of 250 feet. The radioactive fallout from the Bikini Atoll test was spread over a radius of more than 11,000 square kilometers, and traces of material were detected as far away as Australia, India, Japan, the United States, and even Europe. Radioactive fallout heavily contaminated the Japanese fishing vessel Lucky Dragon No. 5, which had the bad luck of sailing some 145 kilometers downwind from Ground Zero. All of the 23 fishermen aboard the boat suffered radiation poisoning and one even died shortly afterwards. Unfavorable weather conditions during Castle Bravo also had the unfortunate consequence of sending potentially dangerous fallout over the inhabited atolls of Rongelap and Utrecht in the Marshall Islands. Jeton Anjane, Minister of Health and Senator in the Marshallese Parliament, later testified, Approximately five hours after the detonation, it began to rain radioactive fallout at Ronge Lap. Within hours, the atoll was covered with a fine white powder-like substance. No one knew it was radioactive fallout. The children played in the snow. They ate it. The US evacuated the inhabitants of Ronge Lap to Majuro two days after the test, the capital of the Marshall Islands. Many returned in 1957, but were evacuated again later that year out of concerns of the lingering radiation levels from the blast site. The Marshall Islands became fully independent in 1986, and in addition to the United States being responsible for the security and defense of the islands, the two countries also reached a bilateral agreement that established the Marshall Island Nuclear Claims Tribunal, which was designed to award compensation for cancers and other serious health effects from the Operation Castle tests. Do let us know in the comments below if you know about some other nuclear test failures. Thanks for watching.